Hello, this is Clemmy Games, and welcome to a first look at Ruin of the Reckless, a chaotic top down roguelite developed by Full Operative Games and released on Steam in April 2017. For disclosure, I received this game for free. This is yet another top down roguelite that joins the pile, but there is something to be said about the fast paced action and chaos in this game which may be interesting to you. Ruin of the Reckless, in my eyes, can be considered a Kickstarter success, raising over 1.7 times its target with a fairly transparent development process. There have been a steady stream of builds being released for backers and a fairly short turnaround time of about 7 months from being kickstarted to being released, and I'm glad for the developers and wish them the best in their sales for this game. You play as a character with recklessness in their heart when they were alive and upon death, your soul was attracted to the beacon known as the Ruin of the Reckless. Legend has it that any spirit that makes it to the top of the Tower of the Ruin will get their wish granted, and thus you set out with that goal in mind. You can play as either Stargrove or Stella, and the game even touts local co-op as one of its main features, though unfortunately I was not able to check that out. Here, the boxes of procedural generation Pixel art and permadeath are checked as usual, but one interesting twist here is that the focus is on melee combat. I have mentioned in other videos that melee combat based gameplay in a top down roguelite is a tricky one to deal with since you do not want to get hit. Melee as opposed to ranged combat does take away some of the usual strategies like circle strafing or kiting, though I suppose it can still be used in some capacity. Your main goal in each level is to find the key which unlocks the elevator, allowing you to ascend to the next floor. However, enemies will spawn in en masse after a couple of seconds in each level, adding quite a bit of chaos to the combat. Thankfully, our hero does have a range of attacks and abilities that are really useful, with the default melee attack based on the weapon equipped, a secondary ability that you get when you consume spell orbs, and a normally offensive spell with a limited number of charges. Combat has to be one of the highlights here, since it does give you quite a large variety of options. Firstly, different melee weapons are fun to use, such as the Blasting Bracer, which allows you to project a short range fireball type attack, the Rapier, which causes you to charge forward, or the Spear, which simply increases your attack range. Of these, my favourite has to be the Gauntlet, since it has a good balance between attack range and attack speed. Also, melee attacks here will hit all enemies in range and are not simply absorbed by one enemy, making the larger enemy mobs less of a chore to fight. Abilities here were also fun to use, since there were ones such as Corpse Explosion, which functions exactly the same as the skill of Diablo 2's Necromancer, but with less gore. These added variety to your destructive power and were on a suitable cooldown so as not to be overpowered while still feeling significant use. Finally, spells that you can use are determined by the spell book that you have equipped, and these range from fireballs and lightning attacks to a revolving shield of blades surrounding you. Furthermore, holding down the spell button allows you to charge these up to greater effect, but it does consume more charges when used. Killing enemies nets you experience in gold, known as Zenny in this game, although gold does disappear after a short period of time, which is something that I am not too fond of in games. Gold can be used to purchase items and upgrades from the shop, while leveling up is another interesting aspect to Ruin of the Reckless. Rather than gaining max health or any stat increase, leveling up allows you to hold more skill orbs, which act as a perk system of sorts within a run. Thus far, the orbs that I have encountered are nice and varied, such as the Technician or the Scavenger, which increases item drops and gold drops respectively, to pet affinity which seems to give you an extra pet for every level in the tower that you ascend. There are perks such as Regeneration, which give you one health at the start of each floor, and even combat ones such as auxiliary attack or agility, adding a random strike per melee attack and increasing your movement speed respectively. Orbs randomly spawn in on each level, but because of the character level limitations, you can only hold a fixed number at any one time. I thought that this was a pretty neat system 
and hope to see more variety in the orbs the further I get into the game, though it does seem pretty limited at the moment and tends to repeat. Next, there are a variety of dashing options in the form of boots. By default, you are only able to dash a short distance, but there are quite a number of options to choose from either from enemy drops or purchased from the shop, such as flying boots which makes you hover, allowing you to avoid traps, or the jump boots which allows you to jump rather than dash. Mobility options are always interesting, and I need to figure out how best to use them in combat scenarios. Finally, Ruin of the Reckless features a very light progression system which carries over from run to run. As you explore the tower or talk to NPCs, you will get Chaos cards which can be placed on the Chaos mat, and these act as modifiers, making the game easier or more difficult depending on the cards that you have chosen. The game helpfully indicates whether a card will make the game easier or more difficult, and there are even balanced cards with both benefits and drawbacks. There are cards which increase your starting health and gold, cards which increase the number of enemies, cards which affect the skill orbs in-game, and cards which change up your starting loadout just to name a few. Modifiers are an interesting way to allow players to control the difficulty to some extent, and my advice is to pick the ones that make the game easier, since Ruin of the Reckless can be rather punishing. On a side note, I really love the little details in this game, such as the chaos mat in the lobby area actually reflecting the cards that you have placed on it, which shows that thought has definitely been put into this game. The tower layout is structured such that you have to clear two areas before a shop, and this pattern repeats with, I think, a boss fight every 10 levels. At later levels, the action is really frantic, with large mobs of enemies, and often I found myself stumbling through and spamming attacks and skills. While the chaos is something to revel in and can be controlled, ultimately I think that this is a knock on the game, as the feedback from your inputs translates across through the game in a very odd manner. It's not so much a matter of skill as in other roguelites, but more of a kitchen sink approach to combat. Overall. I still think that Ruin of the Reckless is a fun experience and I'm eager to play through to see if I get more modifiers, abilities and skills which will make the combat more of a controlled experience. The game does control well with a soundtrack and art style which is pleasant to say the least. Pretty decent roguelite and one which I would encourage people to check out. Anyway, that will do it for this video. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Leave a comment if you like. Thanks again, and I will see you in the next video.